Okay, that was me playing guitar. Bye. Okay, bye. Hi. This is a story about how I was almost the guitarist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, this is something that happened in 2002, I think, or 2003. It was 2003, I'm pretty sure, or 2002, or 2001. One of those years. And I was producing a short film called Tear Nan Og. And Danica got the money to do it. And I was working on the film. And she got permits. And it was a short film. A student film. And I went to Home Depot to return something that we had gotten as a prop or something. I don't know what it was at Home Depot. I was at Home Depot and I was waiting online. It was at, it was on Hollywood Boulevard. I believe it was on Hollywood in between Hollywood and sunset. There's a Home Depot there and these Hispanic guys would sit on the curb outside and wait. And it's, and if you wanted to pay them to work on something, they would, but I never paid them. I'm pretty sure I never paid him and um, I never did. So I was waiting online and either in front of me or behind me, I think he was behind me, was the drummer for the Red Hot, <laughs> the drummer for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chad Smith. And he had some gas tank cover for his 68 Camaro and it was it was either a 68 or 69 Camaro and um there's some screw or something that he needed for the gas tank cover or something and he he had to go to Home Depot and get it and he was just on the line by himself this was I guess before he had a, a lot of money he must have had some money Maybe he had some millions of dollars, but he still had to go to Home Depot. So he was on the back of the line, and I loved the Red Hot Chili Peppers growing up. I had always seen them in the skateboard magazines, in the back of Thrasher magazine, as far back as the late 80s. And they were in some punk movies like Repo Man... I think, and some movie where where Anthony Kiedis and Flea were in a giant monster truck. Anyway, they were they were. I thought they were so cool growing up. And John Frusciante was one of my favorite guitarists. He was he was an amazing guitarist, and he played Fender. And I got a I I started getting Fender guitars because of him. I started getting Fender guitars, and my grandfather had Gibson, so I would get Gibson too. Um, sometimes I'd have Gibson, sometimes I'd have Fender. Gibson is my favorite. I I'll tell, okay, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so I was like really pretty young, 21 or 22. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was maybe older. This must have been 2001. I think I was 22, unless... Oh, it must have been... It could have been 2000. The fall of 2000, I think. But I'm not sure. I think I was 22, and it was the fall of 2000. So... What happened was, but I'm not sure, it could have been 2001, and it wasn't 2002, and it wasn't 2003 that I know of, because I was editing Rebel Fish when I was, when it was 2002 and the end of 2001. 
So it was 2000 or 2001. Anyway, what happened was, and I was 22 years old, I believe. Um, he was online and I said, I knew, <laughs> I knew it was him. Cause I always thought Anthony Kiedis and Flea were so cool when they took their shirt off cause they were in such good shape. However, his drumming, I loved his drumming. I learned some of his drumming technique. He was one of my favorite drummers. And I think he made his drums, he took the P off of Pearl and made it say, and the L off and made it say ear. And I think I did that to my drums. And um, he was a good drum. He got to give it to your mama. What you got, you got to give it to your brother. What you got? He, he would do this beat that would just sound like this. Or he'd go. Anyway, so I learned a lot of my drumming from, by listening to his music and playing it back in slow motion. So I liked his drumming and I learned John, I, I, I got, I didn't learn John Frusciante music as much, but there were a, a song or two I knew how to play. Soul to Squeeze and something else. I'm more Christian now. But, um, he was online at Home Depot, and I knew it was him. I looked at his face, and I knew it was him. It was it was the type of thing where I almost thought he was Will Ferrell. <laughs> Even back then, I thought I almost thought he was Will Ferrell, but he, he it was Chad Smith for sure. I know it was Chad Smith, and I knew because I liked the Red Hot Chili Peppers a lot. My first album I bought of theirs was Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Their big popular one, really popular one. And I had seen them in the skateboard magazines and stuff. And there were these other, other albums they had that were okay. But I never bought their music until Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And I loved that album. I played it so much. All the different songs. I don't know what it stands for now. Blood Sugar Sex Magic does not sound that great compared to Jesus and God, because I follow God and Jesus and kindness. Um, that makes me feel happy. But back then, I liked those songs in that album. So, um, in high school, I had that album. When it first came out, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And um, so, he was on, I'm getting tired here. Fourth of July, they're lighting up fireworks. Let's go out and look at them. So, so, heck. So, he was standing online, waiting in line, and no, no, no. There's a light on. No, he, he was standing online behind me, I believe, at Home Depot, either behind me or in front of me. At Home Depot. Wow, listen to the fireworks. 4th of July, 2020. And he, he was getting a piece of something, like a screw or something that he had to use to, um, to fix his car, his 68 or 69 Camaro. Now, I've, the first thing I said to him was, are you Chad? <laughs> and he said, and he said, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm Chad. Yeah, yeah, I'm Chad. <laughs> and, he, and he said he was. So I knew it was him. And um, he looked the same as he did in the famous, like on MTV and all that stuff back then. And, um, 
It was him. Chad Smith, drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. So, they were looking for a guitarist, but he didn't ask me about it. And I was a young man who played guitar and was okay at guitar. I was a very young man back then. Well, like 22. And um, so I was talking to him and they were looking for a guitarist, but he didn't tell me. However, I knew that John Frusciante was not with him at the time. And he was a really good guitarist that made Blood Sugar Magic, Sex Magic, whatever the heck it was called, that album sound like the way it did. Because it had its spe his special guitar playing on it. There's a bee or something keeps making a noise. Anyway, okay, this is this is really important. This is cool. For for it's interesting what happened. So he was online at Home Depot and he's buying a piece of thing for a sixty eight or sixty nine Camaro, whatever it was. He was online, and I said, I said. I said, I played the, played the drums too. And he said, really? Why did you stop playing? And you know the real reason why I stopped playing? Was because I wanted to play guitar and sing. Because I wanted to play guitar and sing. And I got tired of playing drums for other people who I thought weren't as good as I was on drums. Because when I was 17, I thought I was the best drummer on earth. I believed that in my mind. I was so... Um, cocky or whatever you call it but not you know i was um that may be a bad word to use i was overly conf i was too confident i thought it was the best on earth i wasn't at all you know i was good but not that good and um so i stopped playing drums i packed up my drums one day when i think i was 17 because i didn't like playing drums for other people who I thought weren't as good as I was at drums <laughs> and I wanted to just play guitar and sing and that was one of the reasons I went out to Los Angeles but instead I went to film school and went to all this school and I was producing a film so what happened was I was online there and he said, he said, why'd you stop playing drums? And I said, well, I don't know. I just didn't, I said, whatever I said back then, I don't know what I, how I talked. I don't know if I said, I don't know or what, but I said, I kind of said, there's maybe something else I wanted to do or something. I don't know what I said, but I kind of let him know that I stopped playing drums and there's something else, he knew, he probably knew there was something else I wanted to do instead. And that was sing and play guitar. But um, I was kind of afraid to say it or do it. But eventually I, I did it in my films. And I had to produce a whole huge movie, put the effort into that, instead of just putting the effort into the singing and guitar. Which could turn out amazing if you just do the singing and guitar and write the music to sound really good, to actually sound really good, write the music, not just improvise everything, unless you're so good at playing that, you know, you try to write the music, but um, in some instances, improv can work out okay. So, I, I didn't really understand why, what to tell him, so I told him that, and then he said, Okay, so then I think I had to move forward in line because I didn't want to like insult him and act like I thought the drums weren't as cool as singing guitar. <laughs> but he was so famous. And um, so then I left and I said, okay, bye. And he's like, bye. And he was nice. He was really nice to me. And at the time, they were looking for a guitarist. They did not have Dave Navarro yet who signed on later. And um, so they were looking for guitars, trying different guitarists. And they weren't working with John Frusciante at the time. 
he was the original, he was the, well, Hell L. Slovak was the real, well, there's a long time ago, he died of a heroin overdose or something. They got John Frusciante, who was like amazing. Um, and then he got off drugs later, so they let him back in. And, um, uh, but what happened was I talked to him. So we left. So I left and I got in my Jeep Cherokee. I had this like kind of a little older Jeep Cherokee. It wasn't that old. It was like a few years old, I think. But I had a custom paint job. It was a forestry vehicle that I got at <laughs> I got at an auction. And I had it custom painted silver. And it looked kind of cool so to cover up the forestry color. So I got it for cheap at an auction. And then I painted it silver. And it looked cool, I thought. And it was like a boxy-shaped uh, Jeep Cherokee. And... um on the back, when I was driving away, I saw him in my rear view mirror walking out of Home Depot. And on the back of my Jeep Cherokee, I had a sticker that said Fender. It said Fender for Fender guitars. Because I started getting Fender guitars. Well, these different people played Fender, so I thought it was cool. And John Frusciante was, was the main was the main one, and uh, some other people, Jimi Hendrix, uh, the other guy, you know, um, Kurt Cobain, and people like that, so they played Fender, so I started playing some Fender, and I had a sticker, a, a, a pretty big sticker, about uh, 8 inches wide, or ten, 8 or 10 inches wide, it said Fender, and I, and I drove away, and he saw my sticker on the back of my car, and it said Fender. And I could see him on my rear mirror, and he was like, oh, gosh. Because he, he knew that I was a young man who played guitar, and I stopped playing drums to play guitar. And I missed the opportunity to play for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> play guitar <laughs> <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, but it, but it was very close. I wasn't that social of a person. I never drank. I never did drugs. I just went to school the whole time. That's all that I did when I was in Los Angeles. I went to school. I went to school. <sighs> in film school. And I did films. 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 And I put myself in the movies. And, okay. How I talked to Chad Smith, the drummer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and nearly played guitar for them at a time when John Frusciante wasn't playing with them. Okay. Click like on the video. Subscribe. Yay. Bye. Happy 4th of July if this is on July 4th. If not, have a good day, y'all. Bye.